Welcome to a lesson that is going to review a sapling question, which I believe is number 17. Um, it is the ice cube question. So here we're given two 20 gram ice cubes at negative 16 degrees Celsius, and they're placed into 275 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. Assuming there's no energy transferred in or from around the surroundings, calculate the final temperature of the water after all the ice melts. So we actually have three processes here to consider. One, we know that the ice will melt. That's exactly why we put ice cubes into a um, warm water or a beverage, because we want that liquid to cool down and, and be more tasty. So we have to melt the ice. And to melt ice, that's going to require energy. The energy that it will absorb to melt comes from the warmer water. So just to kind of consider where we're at on a, a line segment graph, we're starting at negative 16 degrees Celsius. And we know that that ice will um, warm up from negative 16 to 0, and then at which it will undergo a phase change in which it will go from solid to liquid. So in other words, we have two line segments to solve for. Line segment AB will be an MC delta T problem, where we're solving for the amount of energy needed to warm up an ice cube from negative 16 to 0. And then line segment BC will be a phase change. We call that uh, delta H of fusion, the enthalpy of fusion here, in which it will melt. So with here, we're just going to use our delta H of fusion and melt the ice. So two different line segments, and I'll show my work over here for the first line segment, we had two 20 grams of ice. So really, the net weight there is 40 grams, 40 grams of ice. The specific heat for solid water, given right here, notice is in a joule per mole Kelvin. So if we have 40 grams, we have to do a little mole map work to make sure that we are agreeing in the unit. So 40 grams of ice, which is solid water, multiplied by a little mole map conversion using the molar mass of H2O as 18. That's just simply uh, summing two H's and an O. We're just doing a simple mole map conversion of turning grams into moles. And let me hit that. Hit it with me because I'm known to make calculator mistakes once in a while, as we all do. 40 divided by 18 gives us 2.22 moles repeating. And I'll just remind us that every time I'm writing water, it's in the solid phase, but that's not changing the molar mass at all. So we're really given 2.22 moles of ice. And that's just that conversion there. Two 20 gram ice cubes is the same as saying 2.22 moles of solid water. So then we're ready to kind of plug in the um, equation. We have 2.22 moles of solid water. I can multiply that by the provided number here, that it takes 33, oops, sorry, 37.3, I'll get that right, 37.7 joules per mole Kelvin. And we have to then multiply that by the delta T, the change in temperature. And if we're starting at negative 16 and rising to 0, it is changing by 16 units, 16 Kelvin units, which are equivalent to um, Celsius units. So notice what we've done. First line segment, we got moles to cancel. We got Kelvin units to cancel by our delta T value. And we'll end with joules of energy. Let me hit that with you. 2.22 moles times 37.7 joules per mole Kelvin, there's Daisy, uh, times 16, our delta T. And I found 1339.104, way too many sig figs, but I'm going to leave them for now and just kind of round at the end. So our first line segment, line segment AB for the first part of melting the ice. Let's continue thinking about um, this phase change from line segment B to C. We've got ice now at zero degrees and it needs to melt. So we're going to call that line segment BC. 
When I set up this math, notice that the heat of fusion here is provided in a kJ per mole. So I'm going to start with this mole unit again, just to make sure that I have an agreeable unit. 2.22 moles of solid water is going to melt, and when it does so, it uses 6.01 kilojoule for every one mole. That's a kJ per mole. Notice this unit above is in a joule. This unit right here will end in a kilojoule, so I'm just going to multiply that out and make sure that I end with like units. I know that a kilo is a thousand. So I'll hit that with us. 2.22 times 6.01 times a thousand. And here I'm finding a value. 13342.2 joules. Let's sum the two. We have 1339.104 from our first line segment added to 1332.2 from our second line segment. What is the sum for the total amount of energy? And I'm finding that to be 14681.304 joules of energy. This is the required energy to melt the ice. Well, where does that energy come from? We mentioned in the beginning the energy had to be provided from cooling the liquid water. So let's do this next. Cooling the liquid water is going to change its temperature. So we need to solve for how much that temperature changed for. Our new target now is delta T. So let's kind of get our bearings. A second system is going on. We have water starting at 25 degrees. And that water for my example was 275 grams. Now that's the number that may change from person to person as sampling generates different values. So you just want to be sure you're checking your numbers. Our process is going to be identical, but just make sure you're noticing where I'm pulling these numbers from as I solve my problem. Yours may match or they may be different. Just be careful about that. But I had 275 grams grams, that's right, 275 grams of liquid water. And I want to know where does it end up cooling? Right, so it's going to be an MC delta T problem. I know the mass. I know the specific heat. What I want to know is the delta T when I pull out this much energy from its system. So my Q equal MC delta T utilizes the previous answer the amount of energy needed to melt the ice is being pulled out of the system from the water that was at 25 degrees. What I also notice is that the specific heat for water in a liquid is also given on a mole per Kelvin, joule per mole Kelvin unit. So this 275 grams of water, I just want to check, 275 grams of water also needs to be converted into a mole. And again, even though it's in the liquid phase, the molar mass of water is still 18. So I'm just going to hit that for us so we have that handy. 275 divided by 18 is the same as saying 15.278, we'll say, 278 moles of water. So this value now, 14681.3 joules of energy plunking in my mole value then I can use my my specific heat here heat capacity 75.3 provided in the data table and notice that's a joule per mole Kelvin and what we don't know is the delta T so how much it changed by 
Now, a couple of interesting things. We can just put delta T here and solve for that variable, and then go back to the original temperature of 25 and subtract delta T to find Tf. I mean, I know that that temperature is going to cool to some point. By solving for delta T, I can take 25 minus that answer and find where it lands. So our delta T calculation will involve this following algebra, 14681.3 divided by the product of 15.278 times 75.3. So just rearranging that to solve for delta T. And let's hit that together, be sure we're getting the same answer. So 14681.3 divided by parentheses 15.278 times 75.3, close parentheses. We want to make sure we're taking the product on the bottom. Don't make a calculator error and forget those parentheses. And I hit that wrong. I'm going to hit it again. 14681.3 divided by parentheses 15.278 times 75.3. That looks much better. Took me tr two tries. Um, 12.76 is our change in temperature. It's not our answer. It's how much it changed by. So remember where we started. It started at 25 degrees Celsius. And if it cooled by 12.76 degrees, I'm going to say 25 minus that answer. And the final temperature of that system is 12.238, 12.24 degrees Celsius. So it started at 25, and it's going to land at 12.24. That energy was used to melt the ice cubes. We're not quite done, however, because Remember, we have the original ice is still at zero degrees. It's liquid now, but it was once ice. It's at zero. And now we have, uh, and, and what was we had 40 grams of ice originally, now at zero degrees as a liquid. And we have over here a system that's uh, 275 grams of water at 12.24 degrees. I understand that they're not going to just stay separate. They're going to blend together. Zero degree water and 12 degree water, they're going to mix together. And what is ultimately their final temperature? So again, if temperature is changing, we know we have an MC delta T problem for what was originally the ice set equal to what was originally the liquid water. And I'm going to use those mole values again because the specific heats were given in moles. So I'm going to go back up and grab some numbers. Remember the ice scenario. We had 2.22 moles of the original ice. And here on the opposite side, we had 15.278 moles of water. So we we had more there, 15.278. Both of them are in the same phase. They're both liquid right now. So the 75.3 joule per mole Kelvin is going to be identical on, on both sides. There's no ice left. It's all liquid water. So that number will eventually just drop out. Now here's the scenario, this delta T part. I have the ice that's now at zero, and I know eventually it's going to warm up as it blends with a 12 degree system. So I know that the final temperature will be larger or a higher number than zero. So my variable here is Tf minus zero. Over here, I know that the 12.24 is going to cool down and so I'm going to represent the delta T there as saying 12.24 minus Tf, where Tf is representing the final temperature of both systems. Right off the bat, these two guys just eliminate out of the equation, don't they? So that's just simplified. We have a mole of liquid water, 2.22, times Tf minus 0.
Notice that when I distribute 2.22 times TF, I'm letting that be represented here, 2.22 times 0 just simply drops out. So the whole left side now has just been simplified as 2.22 TF. Here we do have to distribute, so I'm going to multiply 15.278 times 12.24 15.278 times 12.24 and I'm getting 187.00274 minus and then distribute here you're going to get 15.278 TF. Let's get the variables together so I'm going to add 15.278 to both sides 2.22 plus 15.278 is 17.498 TF and that is equal to 187. Divide both sides to isolate your variable. one eighty seven divided by that previous answer and I'm finding a value of ten point six eight ten point six eight six I'll say I'll round here finally six nine degrees Celsius taking ice cubes and placing it into water and allowing them to mix we had three different systems as we debrief what we've learned step one the process of melting the ice generated the amount of energy that we then carried forward into the second system to cool the liquid water. The third part was allowing the ice that is now at zero degree as a liquid and the water that was chilled down to 20 or 12 degrees to actually blend together and finally when I go to take a sip of this beverage if all the ice is indeed melted the resulting beverage is now landing at about 10.7 Celsius degrees.